Hi and welcome back, I'm Dave from davedustdemos.com and uh, today I've got a video for you about uh, data classification um, and the, the use of the word production data which is fairly meaningless these days uh, in, in many scenarios. The, it's the data that needs to be classified and production is a kind of environment classification so I'm just going to talk you through the various nuances of these terms and, and kind of give you a set of terms that can be much more descriptive for what we're actually trying to achieve here. Uh, as per the last video, there's no demo here, so uh, this is purely governance stuff, learning about uh, different uh, terms and how to describe things and how we would then go about managing those systems. Uh, so if you tuned in for a demo, then, then maybe come back next time uh, when we may have a demo again. But uh, hopefully this will be uh, good information for you anyway, so hope you enjoy it. If you do, hit the subscribe button as usual, and uh, wipe that like button too. Thanks very much, enjoy the video. So the reason that this video exists is uh, just a, a sort of misunderstanding that develops over years of uh, kind of doing the same thing and getting uh, set in your ways and having a certain sort of view of the world uh, in a world that's been evolving. Uh, so moving from standard uh, systems on-prem, we might have had a SQL Server and a copy of that SQL Server for testing. And now we're moving into a world of uh, agility and DevOps and ephemeral environments and all of those kinds of things. Uh, and I, I hear the phrase production data all of the time, and it doesn't really mean anything anymore. So uh, what you can see now is the traditional test QA production, and this is for infrastructure systems. So when we say test QA and production, what we actually mean here is we've got a test system where we might install some stuff and have a play with it. That's so that the uh, the person in charge of those systems or the team in charge of those systems can find out how to use it. They can try out the software. They could try out new features of the software, that kind of thing. And it absolutely doesn't impact anybody. And then you've got a QA version, which is this is what we're about to put into production. We want to test it. We want to test uh, potentially system um, updates and things like that and patches. And then we've got the actual production, which we treat uh, really nicely and we test things before we go there and and that's the one where people actually do some work um, and quite often in these environments we might take a data cut from um, production copy it into QA and this is where the phrase production data comes from so are we working on the production data the stuff that we're not allowed to change and touch and, and that kind of thing or are we not um, and it, it kind of used to be that simple you're either working in the production system or you're working somewhere else um, but things have become a lot more nuanced so I've uh, written this up and I had to make up some some kind of terms for this so these are absolutely not um, industry-wide terms but I, I couldn't really find anything industry-wide that describes this uh, so I kind of made some stuff up I think th that they're reasonable terms use them if you want to use different ones if you want to let me know in the comments if you've got any ideas around this uh, also there's a a document on the github repository that that kind of talks you through all of this uh in a much more structured way than this video will um so please comment wherever you can and, and give feedback so the idea here is we've got uh what i'm going to describe as primary data this is uh the data in the uh, system of records so this is where the data is being changed it's uh if you've got a sales system it is the copy of the data where that data is coming in um, and it's unchanged so this may or may not live in that system but it is the original copy of the data we've done nothing to it um, and then we've got the concept of live data so obviously live data sits on a live system um, and from a governance perspective this is where we're doing the strong governance we want backups of this we want a dr solution for this uh, we're not going to give anyone permissions to go in and, and just muck about uh, the only uh, touching of this data should ideally be through automated means and all of those kind of good things that protect this uh, from interference or from corruption or any of those kinds of things. Um, and then we've got the flip side of that is experimental data. Um, I, I decided not to call this test data as you'll see in a minute, um, but experimental is we've taken a copy of the data 
and we can muck about with it. Um, and and so from a governance point of view, we can let many more people touch it. Uh, it would be easy to replace because we can go back to our primary system and, and take a new copy. Um, and the impact of corrupting that data is effectively zero because the purpose of the copy of the data is for us to change uh, and, and to try things out. So this could be the QA system, this could be the test system, and um, you know this could just be a copy of production um, and a, any sort of uh, variation in between. And then we've got, what if we need to modify the data in some way? So if we've got PII in there, if we've got credit card data, if we've got some sensitive kind of information and we want to take that out, as we process it through the data lake or whatever we're processing it in, uh, and we want to make that safer to use somehow so that, for instance, a um, regulatory compliance doesn't apply to it anymore. So if I've got a bunch of customer data and I completely remove all of the PII from it, I'm left with data that no longer needs to have, for instance, GDPR applied to it because none of the data in there is subject to the GDPR because it's not personal data. and from that perspective, this data is now what I consider to be safe. I can do whatever I want with it. And from a governance point of view, I can let even more people have access to it. I might decide that everyone could have access to it. I could publish it on a website and it wouldn't be, um, with, there wouldn't be really a downside to doing so because I've made that data safe. Um, so when we're working with things like uh, machine learning, we might be training on live uh, production data is the phrase that people normally use. But what we're going to call it is primary data, but it's experimental data because we're not training the model generally on our live system. We're training the model on the same data that's in the live system, but we've taken a copy into an experimental area to work on. Uh, and for governance purposes, that's very, very important. There are, of course, scenarios where you might be working on primary live data in the production environment. And being aware of that is, of course, a good thing. Hence why this video exists. It just talks you through a subject that you absolutely already understand, but it makes you aware of the fact that you need to be aware of the fact. Um, and we might also, for machine learning purposes, be working on safe experimental data in the bottom right-hand corner there. And in those instances, we've taken away PII or we've taken away something else, credit card data, but we're still training on the data set, but, and we're doing that in an experimental uh, location. We could also, in the case of machine learning, quite often be working uh, if the model is sitting in a live environment and we're just training it uh, in, in that live environment, then we could be working on safe data within a live environment. Um, we can also be working on primary data in a live environment that is not sitting on the primary system of record. Um, but it's it's good to get, the data set tagged with these kinds of things so that you understand which governance should apply and where it should apply to. Um, and then I left out test data initially because it's it's kind of a different thing. So test data for uh, most scenarios, so this is not machine learning where you're testing on the actual data for accuracy of the model and that sort of thing. This is talking about things like if I'm writing a Python library and I want to test if my um, adding function gets the values two and two and it should come up with four if i give it the uh, numbers two and three it should not come up with four and that's why we need a test data set so we generate that around the tests and we absolutely uh, need things that we, we know are going to work things that we know are not going to work so if i feed my maths adding function uh, the number one and the letter a it should come back with an appropriate error uh, it shouldn't try to add those together because it's it, it, that just shouldn't work. But there are certain scenarios in certain programming languages where adding one and adding a might work because it could take the ASCII value, for instance, and just add the number that that, that represents. Um, and this is what, why we have test data, but that's not related in any way to your actual primary data or to your safe data. This is data that you've generated. It might follow the same schema, but it isn't the data set uh, that, you, that you got from your system of record. Um, so I've knocked together a bit of a flow chart here to show you how the data gets from, from one place to another. At the bottom there, you'll see data generated based on structured tests. So here you're working backwards from your test to a data set. Uh, all of the other data flows from the actual system of records. So we're taking data, for instance, from a CRM system. We might copy that for other uses in production, in which case that remains as live data. 
Uh, we might copy that for uses other than production systems. So things that are not customer facing, things that are not internal systems of record, business uh, uh, systems, uh, in which case it becomes experimental data. It is though still primary data because it is the same uh, actual data values. It's the same schema, it's the same everything, but that's the difference between live and experimental is how we're going to be consuming it and where we're going to be consuming it. So then we might also just copy and modify that data to remove sensitive information or any other information we don't want in there. Um, and then we call it either uh, live safe data or experimental safe data. And that just means uh, that regulations no longer apply, or it could be that specific regulations don't apply. So you might be able to take away the GDPR regulation, uh, but you might need the uh, credit card information. So PCI DSS might still apply, even though you've removed um, the personal information. So that's probably a bad example because the credit card would would still be personally identifiable. But uh, I think you get the idea that there are scenarios where you might remove just one regulatory requirement. Finally, I've got a, a diagram here that is uh, showing you a, a kind of worked example. So on the top left here, we've got the system of record that is primary live data. We might then copy that same data into a data warehouse. So here, this could be a sales system, CRM, that kind of thing. And we're literally just pulling that data out. Uh, we might um, remodel that data, but it's the same data. So, uh, but it's still a live system because the data warehouse itself is a live system that is in use by the business. And therefore we want to back up the data warehouse. We want DR for the data warehouse. We want access controls on the data warehouse and people are using that. So we, we do need an SLA against that data warehouse. So if it was down, that would have an impact on the business and therefore it's live. People are working on that thing, um, you know, to, to further the business uh, goals. Then we might also have a data warehouse where we've got safe data. So it might be appropriate to have, for instance, upper management could have full access to all of the data and we might want to cleanse that for uh, consumption wider in the business. So how are we doing with sales this year versus specifically what did we sell and who did we sell it to? And so you could have a data warehouse which is from your CRM system, um, but that data warehouse is going to have safer data in it. And therefore we can open up that, uh, that access to a lot more people without worrying about the data. Uh, and it's absolutely appropriate to have different controls on your data. So, um, as data becomes more valuable, it's better to spread it as wide as you can. So if you can make the data safe enough and remove access controls completely, then you're left with anyone can access it. We don't mind. Uh, and anyone that personally thinks there's value in it can have access to it. And, and what you'll find with data is that people generally don't go looking for data they don't need. Um, but anything that needs protecting, obviously you should protect that. Uh, and then on the next row down, we've got some, uh, machine learning going on. So we're taking data from our system of record and we're copying that, uh, and making a perfect copy of the data so that we can train on real data, but we don't want to be training actually touching that CRM system. Um, if you're in charge of a CRM system, you wouldn't want your data scientists having full access to it. If they run an experiment and uh, put a, a wrong line of Python in or a, put a bad query, then it could increase the system load on that system. Uh, it could bring down the database. It, it could cause storage bottlenecks, all kinds of things like that. Uh, and so we generally don't want people just hitting that live system. There's nothing wrong with it. You can access control and, and all of those good things, but that's harder. So um, the, the question that you're often answering here is, do I want to spend all of my time modifying access control lists and change controls and, and checking that people should have access? Or do I want to take the easy option, copy the data somewhere, bearing in mind that in the cloud data uh, storage costs are really, really cheap. So I can take a copy of that. I can um, give that to somebody else. And then I don't need any of those access controls because the access control is on the whole data set. So I'm saying that the machine learning team have full access to that data set, but they don't have access to the system of records. So we've given them what they need and we've protected the primary system. Uh, and then in the bottom right hand corner here, we've got a machine learning experiment, uh, same sort of thing, but uh, where we've got public data or, or data about our customers. And we don't want the uh, machine learning team to have access to the actual data. So we've made it safe. We might have pseudonymized it or something like that. Um, 
And this is kind of for the data scientists to work out a way of anonymizing or pseudonymizing the data that won't impact their experiments. Uh, and, and that's something that's going to change on a case by case basis. But uh, it's, it's absolutely something that, um, that can be done and should be done in a lot of uh, scenarios. So hopefully that's kind of uh, explained the, um, the purpose of this video and, and what you need to be aware of when you're categorizing your data in terms of, of these things. And also it's explained the term production data and hopefully you're going to stop using that term. Uh, personally, I find it very hard to stop using that term. I, it keeps slipping out of my mouth because it's just been in there for 20 years or so. Um, but uh, these terms are going to be much more descriptive and you can really explain to somebody what you mean when you say primary data in a live system. That implies very good governance and original data. And that's what you're trying to get across when you're saying these things. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please check out the matching repository, which has kind of a document which describes uh, in a bit more detail. It's a bit more structured than the video, obviously. Um, but hopefully that's given you some, some good information to, uh, to forward conversations within your environment. Um, this series is going to continue with, with other governance stuff. We'll be talking about uh, backup and DR and that kind of thing later in the series. So tune in again and hit that subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss out on those. Thanks very much. Bye.